Bureau Radiance Fields is uh, presented by uh, Suryesh Kumar from uh, ETH Zurich. Please. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, I'm Suryansh Kumar, and uh, I'll be presenting our work on uncertainty guided policy for active robotic 3D reconstruction using neural radiance fields. So, sorry. So uh, we know that uh, active vision is uh, popular in robotics. Uh, the goal is to suitably align the robot pose so that we can gain as much information as possible. And it's very popular in robotics uh, community. Uh, but this problem is widely uh, studied using explicit representation uh, for obvious reasons because we exactly know where the geometry is so we can reason about whether the surface is reconstructed well or not. Uh, what we aim in this project is to solve the same problem with implicit representation uh, because of the rise of neural radiance field. Uh, this has shown some real uh, powerful representation capabilities. Uh, just for completion, who are not familiar with NERV, uh, it's a simple multilayer perceptron um, modeling. It back projects uh, rays per pixel in the scene space, and it uh, sample points along the ray and render color and volume density for each pixel, and they do it for all views in the scene. Um, and they basically use a simple uh, color rendering loss, and they do alpha composition to uh, do view synthesis. Uh, what is powerful is that uh, we can synthesize realistic image at test time uh, without knowing how the scene will look like from that viewpoint. So, and this can also be, uh, is also studied as a next best view selection problem. So, uh, what is important for, from neural radiance point of view is that we can actually reason about the scene uh, as to like how much information we can gain from an oval viewpoint, uh, and this is what uh, we are using to solve this problem. So we make the following contribution. Um, we suggest a new paradigm of using neural representation to solve this uh, active acquisition problem. And we basically, because we don't have an explicit notion of the geometry, we have to somehow quantify how much information we're going to gain from this uh, multilayer perceptron representation. So for that, we kind of model a proxy for uncertainty uh, in the ray space. So if you look into the equation, basically it boils down to a weighted combination of colors. And if we can analyze the weight distribution, we can reason about how likely we have reconstructed a point in the scene space. And this plot kind of captures that notion. And this is important because the first A part is reconstructed well. And we can see that the samples are concentrated around the region with a clear peak where the noisy part is reconstructed. And we can see the samples are concentrated, but the weight does not have a clear peak. And if we have an incomplete uh, reconstruction, we can say that we can see that the samples are widely uniformly distributed with no clear peak. And this kind of gives us, us a pattern to kind of define uncertainty measure to find a likely viewpoint from which we, if we integrate, we can have as much information gain as possible and we can improve the reconstruction. And uh, this also animation kind of captures that we have a clear peak where the surface is if we analyze the weight distribution. And we define a simple metric to quantify this using entropy metric. And if we have low entropy, we have a clear weight distribution peak. And if we have a high entropy, it's distribute. And uh, this map also kind of shows that, that uh, we can see that using heat map, where the surface has high frequency details, it's not captured well. It has lots high entropy, where the surface is reconstructed well, we have low entropy. And using that, this uh, next best view strategy, using the proxy estimator, we kind of divided this dome space into several cluster, several sectors, and we can reason about how likely an image can give uh, more information gain uh, using, uh, in this section of um, 
classification, basically, of camera poses. And uh, it's, it's not going. Yeah. So here is the overall pipeline. We acquire some initial images to initialize the neural representation. Once we have that, we can use our uh, entropy guided policy to define how likely an image contributes to the initial course reconstruction. And we keep doing that until we don't have a, a information gain at all. And here are some uh, results with um, baseline methods. Uh, I don't want to go over like uh, the, all the stats, but uh, what is important is that if we just randomly select any viewpoint and we acquire the image, how likely we're going to improve with our basically uh, uncertainty guided policy. And we have a substantial improvement over previous uh, methods that uses explicit uh, representation. Um, here are some more results, like if we initialize using six images and 18 images and 54 images, and if we use all images, we have a reconstruction result as good as if we just use 54 images. And we also observe the mean entropy kind of reduces for each pixel for the selected viewpoint. Here is a real world demonstration. Here we are initializing using robot, local boat, and uh, once we initialize the course reconstruction, we kind of uh, let the robot figure out which possible pose to hit so that it can have as much information gain as possible, and it kind of iterates over time, and we have a reconstruction result as good as if we have a explicit representation using traditional structure from motion pipeline or TSTF fusion. So with just using 27 images, we have reconstruction results better than the previous methods. So the takeaway is that we are trying to automate uh, 3D acquisition with uh, uh, active robot, and uh, we showed that it's quite possible to do with uh, implicit representation. The method is very general, and uh, with the recent advancement in neural radiance fields, you can use faster versions of the NERF, and we can have a very good uh, reconstruction that we have tested, and we can have a better results in just less than a two minutes or so. So with that, I conclude. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Suresh, and we, we got time for questions. Uh, does your method or other next best few methods in general take into account travel time to get to the next camera pose? I, I didn't get it. Does your method or other next view methods in general take into account travel time to the next camera pose? Are you optimizing for time o overall? Yes, uh, not, not really. So we assume that uh, we have a predefined kinematics known like. We know that the robot is going to hit that pose in this interval of time. So it's also bounded by the reachability. So if you are into research of reachability analysis, you could do those kind of intricate uh, automation. But we don't do that in this work. Thank you. Uh, sorry. I don't understand how to choose the next best, uh, next uh, best view. So what cri uh, criteria you use to choose the next uh, Okay, so uh, next I next think view? let's go back to the, I think it was fast, so. I think this, this explains it. So, uh, you basically first initialize a course reconstruction, and then you kind of divide this dome structure into several sectors. And for each sector, you have a set of proposal poses. And for set of proposal poses, you analyze the entropy, the proxy entropy that we have defined in the work. And if you have more information, again, means like you have a low, higher uncertainty, you select that view because it's going to add more to the reconstruction and then you keep doing this. I, I hope I answered that, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, and another question is that in this paper you have, you have three contributions, and which one contributed most to the final results? Okay, 
so this is like a, a loop pipeline. We cannot say which contribute better. So for example, if you improve on the nerve side, like with recent advancement, you have more gain in timing. The idea that we wanted to project is that it's possible with implicit representation to do active acquisition. So that's the takeaway. And you can change different modules. So it's hard to say which contributed what. It's a basically a loop pipeline, I, I hope. Okay, so I think we're already up time for this one. And thanks sorry, again Thank for you. the nice talk. So <laughs> that, that concludes uh, the first half of the session. Now I'm handing over to my...